Hello everyone, this is your friendly neighborhood comic book scientist. My name is Rick Morgan and I wanted to share with you my list of the 1960s appearances of Spider-Man that are off title. Meaning that if you're trying to cha chase down Spider-Man appearances, the early ones in the 60s, these are all the places that Spider-Man appeared. Uh, according to me. Am I wrong? Am I right? I don't know. I think this is real. This is my own list that I've been pursuing for decades. Uh, I've seen other lists. I have a couple that I think others have missed. Most notably Avengers 11, where many people call it, oh, it's not really Spider-Man, it's his a doppelganger, but he does actually appear in the book as well. Um, also, people th say that he appears in Avengers Annual uh, number one, and he does not. He is just mentioned in the book, but he does not appear in the book. Uh, there's also a notable appearance of Spider-Man from another universe. Uh, not Earth 616, I'm pretty sure for the first time. And uh, here's my criteria for what, what's an appearance. Appearance cannot be a cover appearance only. And that, thank God, it saves me from buying a Daredevil number one for to have in my collection. But I mean, I could just buy it, of course, if, it, if I needed it, because he only appears on the cover of Daredevil number one. And, it, and I don't count um, reprints. And that prevents me, that keeps me from buying. Uh, Fantastic Four Annual Number One, which is just a uh, reprint of Amazing Fantasy 15. Um, so if it's not a reprint, it's not a cover appearance only. If he appears in the book, I count it. So this is my list. Uh, I hope you agree with my list. If you don't, please let me know if I'm missing something. I think I got it right. Uh, otherwise, take care. Enjoy the video. Take care. Bye-bye. This is the first appearance of The Amazing Spider-Man. This is from August of 1962 with our famous Jack Kirby cover. And there are Steve Ditko art and Stanley writing on the inside. This book is uh, doesn't have a complimentary version of Amazing Spider-Man because Amazing Spider-Man hadn't been published yet. But if you want to see the first appearance of The Amazing Spider-Man, he's right here on this page. That's our boy, and not hyphenated yet. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good moment in comic book history. This will give you the warm fuzzies, and I got to tell you, it definitely gives me the warm fuzzies to see this book every time. And it's uh, it's a nice one. Now, this one I'm definitely going to have to clean one day, but I obviously want to be very careful with it. Um, so that's it. That is the end. That is the beginning and the end of of uh, nineteen. 62 for us. All right, for 1963, we have the first appearance of Spider-Man outside of his title. Here is Strange Tales Annual Number 2, which was published in June of 1963, and that came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man Number 3. So that's, this, that's what was happening here. And we have Spider-Man does not have his uh, Spider-Man symbol on his chest there, notice. And this is the appearance of Spidey here. Good job, Nolan. And that one is there. And we've got the next one is uh, Strange Tales 115. And there are a couple of appearances here this one of, of note. So this one came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man number seven. Okay. And so, and this was 12 of 63. This is December 1963. And Spider-Man appears a couple places in here. So first he appears, it might fool you into thinking that he is um, a memory. So they talk about the Fantastic Four sort of reflect on things that they remember about Spider-Man. And then he actually appears right here later on page seven. You see him, actually, actually six is his first appearance there. And that is, strangely enough, all we have for 1963. This is the starting of 1964. So this came out in January of 1964. This is Avengers number three. And you'll be able to see Spider-Man in here uh, right there. This is the first meeting you'll see of Tony Stark and Spider-Man. Uh, Iron Man and Spider-Man. Iron Man projected himself to Spider-Man. And that came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man number eight. Let's see here. So that's Amazing Spider-Man number eight. 
And next we have Strange Tales 119. And that came out in April of 1964. And Spider-Man appears here on this page here, meeting Johnny Storm briefly. And that one came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man number 11. Okay. Then we have Tales to Astonish 57, which came out in July of 1957. Okay. We have Giant Man there and the Wasp. And here's Spider-Man here on this page. This is his first appearance in this book, in the internal there. And that came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man 14. You can see Amazing Spider-Man 14 here. Okay. Then we have Tales to Astonish 59, which came out in September of 1964. And you'll see Spider-Man in here only as a projection in this memory there. That's the only time he appears in that book, so it's subtle. And he that came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man number 16, which is in September of 1964. Popular lists have missed this one, which is Avengers number 11, because they say Spider-Man appears as a doppelganger, which was a which was generated by Kang. He just made a perfect replica of Spider-Man, like, and he says, in fact, it's child's play. But Spider-Man does show up later in the book, and he wears these spider wings, actually, which is kind of crazy. I'll see if I can find the, that page. So he shows up for real, and here he is. Look, he's made spider wings the first time, and he fights the doppelganger Spider-Man. So that's Avengers number 11. That came out in uh, 12 of 64, and that was December of 1964, and that was the same month as Amazing Spider-Man number 19. And lastly, we have an honorable mention, which is pe people commonly say that Spider-Man shows up in Avengers Annual number one. Uh, he's on a lot of lists as a, as a parent. He does not appear in this book. He's not actually in it. He is mentioned uh, in a note here, and they talk about the fight that they had with him uh, above, and they, his name is mentioned, but Spider-Man himself does not appear in this book. All right, welcome to 1965. This is Strange Tales number 128, which came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man number 20. Okay. Spider-Man's appearance in this book is just a uh, beam out to, to send a message to Spider-Man and other heroes there. That's the only time he appears in Strange Tales 128. And then look at Fantastic Four number 35. You see that? That came out in uh, 2 of 65, the same month as Amazing Spider-Man number 21. His appearance in these Fantastic Four books is subtle. So the first one is he's just Peter Parker right here, this panel. And you see him there. Then the next one is... We have Fantastic Four number 36. 36. And this is even more so. There's an engagement party uh, for Reed and Sue. And in this panel right here, you just see Spider-Man's hand stealing a piece of cake with some webbing because he was not invited to that party that came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man 22. Here. And you'll see that and violating my own rule of cover appearances, but I just had to show it just because it's a fun cover in general. Fantastic Four number three, 1965. Spider-Man appears on the cover only, which I normally don't count, but it's a fun cover, so I wanted to show it. And that is 1965. Welcome to 1966. These are some obscure ones. I'm not sure how they fall within my rules, but this is Journey into Mystery with Thor, number 124. Spider-Man appears here. Right there. In that ad. And so he is in a comic book that came out the same month as Spider-Man 32. But it is the cover of 33 that you see in the ad. So there's, the th there's 33. 
And this is, that's the cover that you're seeing right here on the book. So that's, that's what's behind Thor when he's reading that. And that's it. That is his appearance. And now that's not really his appearance, but we're going to count it for, for fun. There is, this is Daredevil number 16. This is fun, really fun, because this is the first Romita growing up Spider-Man. And that's right there. It's on the cover of this book. Pretty easy to find. And it's phas phantasmagoric penciling by Romita. Then we have, that, that. by the way, that came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man 36. So he was not on the regular title yet, but he would be soon. Then we have Daredevil number 17, which continues the uh, Romita stuff. And there he is right there. And we have, that came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man number 37. Okay. Then we have uh, X-Men number 27, Re-Enter the Mimic. And in this book, Amazing Spider-Man appears right here first. And the X-Men, I, I believe it's the first meeting of the X-Men and Spider-Man. And they want to meet him there. Then that came out the first month as Amazing Spider-Man number 43, in which Romina was firmly on the book by that time. And that is 1986. <laughs> start off the year 1967 with this great yellow cover and it has here comes daredevil man without fear daredevil 27 which came out in 4 of 67 which is the i'll show you later that came same out the same month as fantastic 461 but it came out the same month as amazing spider-man 47 which is the same for our next book too so in this book we have pretty obvious Appearance of Spider-Man, right there. And this one was drawn by our lovable uh, Gene Colan, who would do lots of Spider-Man in the future. We have Fantastic Four number 61. Came out the same month, 4 of 67. So Spider-Man was busy that month. And he appears as Peter Parker with the ever lovely Mary Jane Watson at a football game in this book, which was drawn by Jack Kirby. So, and that doesn't look like, it doesn't as much look like a Kirby Peter Parker to me, but it, it is, the rest of the book is Peter Parker. So, um, and that's very clearly, the rest of it's very clearly Kirby art, but that one always, that one panel looked, still looks to this day very Romita-y to me. If I can find it again here for you, if we look at it, um, right? As obviously the rest of this is Kirby, but that that Peter Parker and MJ look super Romita like. And the, although this guy looks like a Kirby, so I don't know, maybe maybe I gotta switch brands of deodorant or something that's poisoning my brain. Alright, this is Strange Tales with Doctor Strange now, and track the history of that title, you can never figure that out. But that came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man number 48. And Spider-Man appears here in this panel there so we got that then we have for you x-men lovers out there we have x-men number 35 which is a great i think it's roy thomas i think it's doing this one and that is by uh yeah roy thomas in that book and he is you know he's all over in this book he shows up as peter parker first on his motorcycle and that came out the same month as a pretty similarly colored in my opinion book amazing spider-man number 51 and that, my friends, is 1967. All right, welcome to 1968. This is Fantastic Four number 73. It came out the same month as this lovely first cover appearance of Mary Jane Watson by John Romita, number 59, one of my favorite covers of all time. I love that split blue and yellow, and of course, who doesn't like to see Mary Jane shaking her money maker on the stage there. And we have this appearance of Spidey. And I'm going to stop showing, I think, every single appearance if they're pretty obvious. This is a 
one of the more obvious ones. We've got Daredevil and, of course, Spider-Man. As drawn by Jack Kirby. So that's a good one. I really like this one. This is some good Kirby, Kirby stuff here. And then we'll move on to... Um, this one's more obvious. I'm not even going to show it up. This is Marvel Superheroes, number 14. There's a Spidey story in here that I think was supposed to be a regular um, Spider-Man story, but they ended up folding it into this one. It was a previous story written that got reprinted here. It was a dumb story, so it's not really worth reading. So, and Spider-Man came out here. He is here in this page here. Now, this is actually the one of the first non-Earth-616 Spider-Man. It's actually Spider-Man, but from an Earth, different Earth. And Giant and Iron Man says, Giant Man and I just polished off the newcomer called Spider-Man. If he weren't relatively inexperienced, though, I think he'd have given us all a run for the money. So that's just a view with their communica, communica ray or something like that. It's called a communiscreen to a different Earth. So this is probably the first alternate Earth Spider-Man. That's why I mention it. We follow up with Avengers number 58. So Avengers 58 was published in November of 1968, the same month as... Amazing Spider-Man number 66. Fun Mysterio cover. And he appears here. On this page. So there's Spider-Man. And then we have Amazing we have Avengers 59. Oops, I just closed the page on it. That I have marked. And Spider-Man appears here in where is he in this one? He's with Jonah Jameson, I think, in this book, if I remember. There he is. Spider-Man, there's Jonah Jameson talking about Yellow Jacket, and he complains about there's Spider-Man here on the corner of that book. And then that's that's all we get of him is those two panels. Uh, that and then we have that came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man number 67. Then we have uh, Spectacular Spider-Man number two in this case. I don't mention number one because it is reprinted. That was reprinted later in Amazing Spider-Man. 117 and 118. So um, I'm not mentioning that one or counting as a first appearance for this sake, but that otherwise wraps up 1960. Welcome to 1969. This is the Summer of Love, and this very dirty book, which I'm itching to clean, is Avengers number 60, which came out in January of 1969, the same month as Amazing Spider Man 68. Now, Spider Man appears here. And I'm sorry, I didn't have these ones pre-marked. But he appears here, right there. And this one. This is the marriage of uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. He also appears in Submariner number 14, which was the same month as Amazing Spider-Man 69. The following one, which is July of 69. And... He appears, he just says, I think he says, like, I'd love to get my web spinning mitts on this guy or something. There he is. He says, I'd love to get my web spinning mitts on that Joker just for five minutes, that's all. And that's his appearance here in Submariner, which is a, this is a pretty book. I like that cover. Lastly, 19, in Daredevil number 54, is a weird looking cover appearance, kind of like a Charles Vest looking cover in Daredevil. And he runs into Daredevil in a, I think they, into a fight together. They have like, they just happen to have fights that run into one another at the same time, I believe. And let's see if I can find that page here for you. It's right. Here we go. Hornhead blundering into my fight. What? Spider-Man didn't know you had a franchise wall crawler. And then Spider-Man says, funny, I once thought Dee Dee was a blind lawyer, but Matt Murdock's dead now. So scratch one web-headed hunch. Well, Super weird, because I don't think there's any reference to that ever in the Spider-Man continuity I've ever seen, but oh well. That came out the same month as Amazing Spider-Man 74, and that was in uh, July of 1969. So that wraps up the 60s, folks. Well, everybody, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you want to see the same thing on the 1970s, uh, let me know. And remember to please uh, like and subscribe to the video. Thanks so much. Take care.